Hey, Terrell, I'm looking for this part. It's got a, like a little arm on it and some proggy things, you know. It's about a yay big, probably about that big. You know what I'm talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, uh, how about, how about a piece of paper? I can maybe draw it out for you. All right, here. There you go. Have at it. little arm with the little proggy things off of it it's about that big that's where it attaches to that other thing you should be able to tell what it is from this right I have no idea what that is that doesn't look like any lawnmower part it looks more like a an amoeba some kind of parasite or a dead lightning bug I, I don't I don't know what that is scruffy you, you should have probably taken a picture of the part with your phone don't you have that crystal ball still? Uh, no, not with me right now. Uh, Junior's out on a call, service call, and he's got the uh, crystal ball with him. Sorry, Scruff. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? Actually, I think I do got a picture of it on my phone. Let me check. All right, good. All right. Let's see here. Huh. Hey, Terrell, man, check this out. I got a picture of me and Bigfoot. The monster truck? No, man. Bigfoot. I found him. Holy cow. Pretty cool, ain't it? <laughs> that looks photoshopped. That ain't real. That's 100% real. That dude is a lot of fun to party with, man. I'll tell you what, he's awesome. Hey, check this one out, too. Built a space shuttle in my backyard. Yeah. That ain't no lawnmower. That's the space shuttle for real. <laughs> Took me a couple of weeks to build that. Real nice, Scruffy. But I ain't got all day to sit there and look at pictures on your phone. I got work to do. You got the picture of the part or not? Jeez, dude, chill out. Just trying to have a little fun, show you some cool stuff. All right, you know what? I got it right here, actually. Here it is. Bigfoot again? <laughs> Look, I'm busy. I got work to do. Do you have the picture of the part you need on your phone or not? <laughs> whoa, whoa, hold on, Terrell. I'm sorry, all right? I'm done messing. I got the real picture right here. Here it is. Pterodactyl hair. And today's video is going to be on this here. MKD 524 Snow Troller. Now, I think... We had gotten this from a fan. I think a fan had given us this, this snow trawler. And it didn't run. So we got it running. It was just the basic, you know, rebuild the carburetor, put new fuel line on it kind of thing. And it had uh, like non-grip, non-gription tires, almost like mini bike tires on it. And if you wanted to get more traction, you would have had to put chains on it. So I swapped out and put those snow hog type snow blower tires on it to give it some better gription instead of using them chains. Because them chains could, you know, they can uh, tear up your driveway. So these tires are good for gription. And then another thing we noticed is the drive. The drive is like all wore out. So that's what we're going to fix in today's video. We're going to fix the drive. So I already went and removed the belly pan on it. Because when we were checking it out, I think we might have put some new belts on it too. Oh yeah. Put two new belts on it also. It needed. We changed the belts. So when we were changing the belts, we noticed these axle bushings are wore out. And in here, for the drive, that holds this friction wheel, look at this. This is all wore out. So we're going to fix that today, too. 
So this shifting mechanism here, these things get sticky. So they need to be lubricated. You can even feel it. It's it's sticky, this shaft. So the only thing that would, you know, fix that would be some lubricant for that. See, I can't even get it to shift. And a lot of times people force it and then it bends this rod. And then you don't get action, you know, accurate shifting on it. So we may have to bend this back. But the first thing I'm going to do is take the wheels off since we got to change them bushings. And that's just simply take off this pin here. If yours aren't rusted to the shaft, pull out that quick pin. And then there's a snap ring on there. Because this has got that differential feature on these old ones. All the new snow blowers either have a lever have levers up here where you can unlock the differential but on this these old snow blowers what you would do is you take this pin out and put the pin in here in this other outer hole and then now you got one wheel peel somewhere on here is a sticker that tells you that right here see Mr. Cameraman, you get the picture of that. But I don't know why you'd want one wheel peel. Because when you're blowing snow, you want to have traction on both wheels. It just makes it easier to, you know, to turn when you get to the end of the turn. You don't have to muscle it as much. Now we got lucky, these wheels came off. A lot of times they're rusted to the shaft. So that one came right off. See if this one will come off on this side. Take the little snap ring off. Yeah, see we got lucky here. You can tell they haven't been heated up or anything. So we're gonna have to clean these shaft, this shaft up real good. There's a little shim washer on here we need to take off on each side. We need to clean this real good before we put the new bushings on. So they make those bushings aftermarket. And I got mine from Stens. And there's the Stens number and there's the original MTD number 0490-941-0490. Replacement ones are plastic, where the old ones were a bronze. And you can see how wallered out they are. Look at that. Holy cow. So this snowblower really got a lot of use. Plus, I'm sure that rust on that shaft worked as an abrasive and uh, probably helped wear it out. But this is the replacement for that. So since we're in here, we'll just get that off right away. And then I'll get a wrench and we'll take that off. Get that out of our way. So we can get to this main shaft in the middle here. I'll just use a fits all because it was handy. out of our way somewhat out of our way there we go it's just the shoulder bolt so that'll pivot that'll give us a little more room I may have to replace this drive disc too I don't know if I got one of them I mean, this one's not horrible. It's got some cracks in it. I'll see if I got a new one. But now you can really see how, how wore out this thing is. So there's a bolt on each side of this here. 
see if this croissant will take it off. I gotta get another wrench. I'll just use an impact. Should be half. Oh, my drill is got a wonky battery. Hold on, cut. All right, got that out. This is a plastic bushing in here. It seems to be, that's a little wore out. I might have these in stock. If I do, I'll replace them. Now, this other one on this side, which is a three quarter. MTD would use a lot of the same parts. So this looks all right. This isn't worn out. They would use a lot of the same bushings on a lot of their lawn mowers and snow blowers, which is a good idea. Let's see if this chain will come off. slide this whole mechanism out. friction disc off. All right, let me take that off too. Let me get my uh, ratchet for that. Where is that ratchet? Half inch. Now here it's January 5th, I think today is, when we're shooting this video. And we still haven't gotten any measurable snow in Podunk. They're calling for some snow tonight, but it's not gonna be anything crazy. We might get some next, next week. They get this thing in there. It'd be nice if they would have made this removable. We're not making it easy to get this thing out of here. This gear is all part of the shaft here. I'm gonna make this thing very mechanic friendly. Oh. 
cut it out of there. Now I can get this out. Man. All right, so I gotta remember that I gotta hold this thing at this kind of angle when I go to put this thing back together. All right, we struggled and we have succeeded in getting it out. So let me take it up on the bench and see what's wore out here. All right, so now remember that the sprocket is on the same side as that friction disc. So we're gonna slide that out. And then there's a snap ring here. Take that snap ring off. And there's a washer. And there's these bushings in here. And this sprocket with this hub is all wore out. Is there a master link on this chain? I don't see a master link. How is this sprocket on here? Okay, this sprocket is held on with a little clip. So it should be a screwdriver in here. Pop that clip off, put that there. And this should all slide out. There's that. Take that chain off. So yeah, look at that. I didn't know this was all wore out. Who knows if I could even get this, if this part is even still available. Because what I did was ordered these bushings, which they still make. Here's the part number for them bushings. But now I gotta see if this is available. Let me clean this up a little bit. See how, it looks pretty bad. Man. Wow. Look at that. What were they doing? Blowing snow from here to Alaska to get that war out. I'm gonna have to look up this part. There's a ridge on here. Let me file that ridge off of there. Let me get a file. Yeah, it, we'll look this thing up and see if this part's even still available and if it's not crazy money. Because what it would cost to weld it back up and machine it down probably wouldn't be worth it either.
I mean, it, it's taken a lot of the slop out of it compared to this. To this. I mean, it would work. Have to polish that up. Them grooves are just gonna, it's gonna wear this out. But I'm sure it would last a few years before it would wear this out. This bushing was only, I wanna say it had a list price of about $7 on it. All right, let me go to the inner screen. See if that part's still available, if I can get it. Okay, so I looked it up on ProPartsDirect.net, our friends over there, to see if it's still available. And if you notice, this snowblower is from 1991. It's almost as old as Mr. Cameraman. How old were you, Mr. Cameraman, when that was? You were four years old. So, when I click on 14, it says call us, which means it's not available anymore. So I went to Oscar Wilson because I have an account with Oscar Wilson. And for some reason, yeah, here it is. So here's the part, 7130281. And no longer available. This item is no longer available when inventory is depleted. So that's saying, okay, well, there's a possibility. So then I went to MTD's website and I typed in the number and the shoulder screw comes up and it's like, did you mean 7130281? Yeah, that's what I mean. 7130281. And when I click on it, it just keeps going back to this shoulder screw, which isn't the part we need. So then I went online and I Googled it to see and, and went to, to eBay and zero results. So I can't find that part. This isn't it. This is an axle with a sprocket on it for a different snow blower. It says 524. But he wants $65 for that. And that's not that's not the part we're looking for. We gotta have that hex shaft to go through there. So only other option would be. If I had a lathe, which I plan on getting whenever we get our shop dialed in, that could, that could take a couple of years from now. Only option would be put it back together because the new bushings are taking out some of the slop or weld this up and take it to Farmer Dan and have Farmer Dan machine it down. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. I think I'll take it to Dan. I'll weld this all up, get it all ready for him, so that way all he's gotta do is chuck it in the lathe and smooth it out. Now, it's probably not gonna look pretty when we get done with it, because sometimes when you weld it, um, if you got high and low spots, there may be pockets in there. Plus, we got the snap ring groove in here. And I kind of don't want to cover that up when I go to weld on it. So I got to be careful not to cover up that groove. He could probably cut another groove in there. I'll measure that anyway, just in case. We got to put a groove in there, then I'll know exactly how far from the end that groove has to be. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to weld it up. All right, that groove, the start of that snap ring groove is exactly three quarters of an inch from the end. 
that's where it starts and it's about a sixteenth of an inch wide so all, all I would have to remember is it's three quarters of an inch from the end all right I'll start welding it up Okay, it's welded up, so I'll take it to Dan, and he'll machine it down, and he'll put that snap ring groove back in there, and then uh, we'll put it back together. Now normally, I wouldn't go through all this trouble to do this, but I'm doing it for you, grass rats, because you like to see this kind of stuff. I probably would have just pulled that engine off that snowblower and just scrapped the rest of it. But since I already did the the carburetor and the electric start works, and I already went through all that trouble putting the belts and the tires and all that, you know, I'm 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 already into it. So I might as well just go all the way, even though I'll never get the amount of time and effort into it back out of it once I sell it, because I'm not going to keep it. I don't need it. And what am I going to get for it? 200 bucks, 250 bucks. But we're doing it mainly for the video to show you that, yeah, a lot of this stuff, even though parts aren't still available, you just got to work around it. Now, if this was for a customer, it'd be a different story. They, they would probably not want to invest the money into it. They probably would say, no, we'll just take that money in. Put it towards a new one but if you have you seen those new snow blowers oh my god what pieces of junk they are you might be better off putting the money in some of this older stuff and as much as a snow blower gets used especially in this area probably only a couple of times a year you know it might be worth it but those decisions are all left up to the customer so there you have it weld it up we'll get it machined down Again, it's not the space shuttle, it's just a snow blower. So even if he machines it down and I didn't get, you know, the weld to fill it in, there might be some little pockets in there. How fast does this thing spin? It probably doesn't spin very fast. All right. So we'll film on once we get that back, probably three or four days. Stay tuned. All right, I got the part back from Dan, and uh, he cut that snap ring groove in there for me. So let's take a look at how well it turned out. So there's some pockets on there where you know when I welded it I didn't get it perfect but that's no big deal and then he cleaned up this little groove here where this the shim washer goes so yeah it looks good and he only charged me 25 bucks to machine that down so it's better than it was I also while we were waiting for this to get done, I went online and I bought a new friction disc. Now they don't make this aftermarket. So I had to get it from Oscar Wilson. So I got a new one and it was $29. And here's the part number if you're interested in it. 05080AP. A is an apple, P is in poo poo. And then since I had to order this from them, I went ahead and got that new bushing, that plastic bushing that goes on the other side of this shaft. And that part number is 941 -0225. Now, Stens and Rotary also make this little plastic bushing. I thought I had some, but I didn't. This little hex bushing. The Rotary number is 
336. And the STENS number is 225 532. So now I'll uh, drive these old worn out bushings out and we'll press the new ones in. And then I also noticed that this shaft that this rides on, this sprocket rides on, I noticed that this sleeve is supposed to come off of here and the sprocket, it's keyed on there. But it was rusted on there. That's why I had such a difficult time disassembling the snowblower. Because if this stuff would have slid off, I could have slid the shaft off and got out everything out a little easier. So I went ahead and did my heat quench trick. And I heated it up, cherry red, and quenched it, and then this thing came apart. So I'll clean this up on the wire wheel. And I already cleaned all this up uh, on the wire wheel. And I also cleaned the axle up. Because remember how rusty the axle was? Where those bushings went, axle bushings? And I sanded it a little and I put a nice radius on the edge because it was kind of flared. Looked like somebody was beating on it a little bit at one time. And I also kind of sanded down these holes where those pins go in because those pins will get raised up a little bit from them. Turning on there, it'll raise the steel. And then that new, those new plastic bushings I got, you know, are going to be hard to, hard to get on there. But they fit on there pretty tight. And then here's where it was wearing on there. So we got a little bit of play. But again, it's just a snowblower. It's not spinning that fast. So that's where they go. So that'll take up a lot of that slop. All right. This thing, that, that grease that they got on these chains and that was all over the sprocket and everything, that stuff was pretty nasty and it was really, really hard to get off my hands when I went to clean them. So I'm going to put these rubber gloves on so my hands aren't so hard to get cleaned after this from them chains. So I'm going to drive these out over, over there and then I'll press in the new ones. And we can reassemble this thing. So these might be a little difficult to get out only because when they're pressed in there, they're like this. It's not like there's a gap in there where I can get in there with the punch and drive them out. There's a little bit of a ridge. Maybe I can catch it a little bit. It's not moving. I'm going to sharpen the edge. My punch is all. I need a nice square edge on there. So let me fix my punch. That'll probably help. Oh yeah, see it's starting to move now. So that worked. Got to get it up on these blocks. There's your dinner. Got one out.
see if I can find a socket that'll fit in there. All right, this one's pretty close. There's our dinner. We wipe this out. There's like some dried grease on there. And I kind of put a couple of little divots in there with the punch. So I'll file them out and then we'll we'll press these back in. I'm not gonna beat them in. But you can beat them in if you don't have a press. If you got a plastic hammer or a rawhide hammer, you know, you can beat them in with that. If you don't have either one of them, you can put the bushing in there and use a block of wood, preferably a hard piece of wood like oak other than say pine, but if that's all you got is pine, then you could do that. You could tap them in that way. Otherwise, if you beat on it with a hammer, you're gonna, you're gonna mar it all up and maybe expand it and then that shaft isn't gonna go through there. But I wanna clean up those little divots first before I go. driving them back in. So let me get a file. Just two little divots. Kind of raised up the metal from that punch. All right, we're good. Now let me press these in. All right, I got my little arbor press. Let me line it up first. There we go. Flip it around. And also put a block of wood on there. There's your dinner, all pressed in. Now let's reassemble it. All right, so now let's put this thing back together. I'm gonna put some lube on here a little bit. These, I believe, are oil white bearings anyway, but they still wore out. So I'm going to put some of this louver plate on there. Because this is like a water resistant kind of grease. You can put whatever grease you want if you're doing this repair. But I'm going to use louver plate. And then there was another washer on this side, and then our snap ring. Make sure it's locked in there. There we go. All right, we're back together. Got to put our chain on there. Here it is. That's the part that was getting me all uh, dirty and nasty. 
So we need to pop this clip off again. I popped it back on there so I wouldn't lose it. Oh, getting ahead of myself here. Here we go. Well, I got it apart. I'll put a little lubri plate on here too. Come on, chain. There we go. Line up them splines. And then we'll pop this little clip back on there. All right, now we can stick this back in here. So if I remember right, this went like this. No, that's right, this was on this side. So this little fork here fits on this shaft in the back, like that. Now I'll shove that shaft through there. This goes in this way. But I gotta clean this up yet. So I need to take that key out so I don't lose it. And go over on the wire wheel and clean up all that nastiness. So let me test fit this now. Okay, that fits on there. That fits on there. Want that key fit in there tight, even though I pulled it out. I'll try turning it around. Because it did come out pretty easy. Now it's probably from uh, buffing it. There's a bunch of crud in here now. There we go. Now I'm going to put some never sleeves on there. So next time it'll come off. Now I got to go get the never sleeves. So I got the copper and I also have the non metallic, which we sell in our online store Universal Lubricant and Anti Sleeves. So I'm going to use the copper on, on this one. And then that goes on there. Alright, so I got the shaft ready to install. And I also put some of that louver plate on here because this needs to slide. This part needs to slide back and forth. That's got the friction disc on there. So the shaft goes in from this end.
because on this end is our new plastic bushing our little hex bushing goes in here but we also got to be able to put the sprocket on so I'll shove it in all the way past I'll put the sprocket on sprocket it doesn't matter which way it goes on it's centered and then I gotta put the chain on then I gotta put this little bushing on there now see how much easier this would have came apart had all that came off of there before and then this is where our bronze bushing goes now this bronze bushing that goes on here is the same bushing that's on the axle bushing so if this is wore out on yours and your axle bushings are wore out instead of ordering two you need to order three but this is the same as these axle bushings that go in here that's the same thing so now we can stick that in there now we can put our plastic hex bushing over here on this side and then we got our retaining bolt and thick washer that go there and then we've got our thick washer for here and then it's got this thin this is a cupped washer it's got a little bit of a cup to it so we want the reese the cupped part to go on the inside you know because it's supposed to spring against it the whole tension against it and then there's our nut now we can put that axle in now if you notice there's two different spots in here for the axle to go so this must be for maybe two different models because if we put it in this other one you know the chain might not the chain isn't going to be long enough so I really don't know why there's two sets in there nope into a problem here I'm gonna take this back off this bushing out of here for a second because I'm gonna need some room to get that axle in here because this axle's got to go in so I'm gonna shove this all the way over to this side And then hopefully I'm going to be able to get this. Let me take this off too again. I should have probably put this in first. Let me shove the shaft out of the way a little bit. Can I get past there? No. It's not like I've done many of these. There we go. All right, now I got it fast. But I got to get the chain on there now. Duh. All right. I got to take this thing all back apart. Let me pull this shaft out. Pull that all 
out. Let's take this out all together. All right, let's start over. Put that chain on here. And I got that sprocket on there. We'll just let rust that sprocket in there. All right, now, since we got this out again, let's put this friction disc on there. Again, it's not like I've done many of these. This thing's from 91. Maybe back in the day, 30, 40 years ago, I had this thing on backwards, so I had to flip it around. And the reason I know I had it on backwards is because I can look at this old one and see where the head of the bolts had wore into there. So I stuck it on here like this, which is wrong. It goes on like this. Again, it's not like I do a lot of these. All right. Now we could stick this in there. Just like this. Shove that all the way to one side. Hook that little fork back on there. And we'll just let it lay in there. Now we'll get our shaft that's all lubed up. Stick that in there. Now, we'll get the sprocket on there. Get it lined up with the keyway. And here's our spacer. Put our bushing in, our washers, cup part there, now I can put this hex bushing on this side. And our 5 16th bolt in there. All right, so now we're hooked up. Let me tighten the one down for the hex bolt, for the hex uh, bushing side. Then I need a 3 quarter socket to tighten the other side. Now we'll get our new axle bushings. And I'm going to want to put some more of that, a little bit more of that louver plate on them. Now we can stick this in there. And undo the shoulder bolt.
All right, let's see what uh, we may have to adjust this. Yeah, that's how it went. You could see how it was wearing on the back side here. Let me move that shifter a little. There we go. I may have to pull that cotter pin out and adjust this a little. Let's see what we got here. This is reverse. And again, this looks like it's bent, this rod. And then this is supposed to go all the way to fifth gear, which would be all the way over to this side here. See, this doesn't want to, this is like binding here. All right, something ain't right with that. But that's the way it was when I took it apart. All right, let me pull this off of here. Pull that cotter pin out of there. That welcome back cotter pin. Put it in there like that. All right, it's gonna hit on here, so it must come in from the other side like it was. Let me try straightening this out some. I don't think it's supposed to be bent. I think there's supposed to be somewhat of a bend in here, but it looks like it's bent here too. So I'm gonna stick it in the vise and, and, and take out this little bit of a bend right there. All right, now I've bent it. You can tell that this is like a factory bend here. But it had another little bit of a kinked bend in there. It looks pretty straight that way. And that probably happened because of this, you know, was sticky when we, when we started taking it apart. This was sticky from that sticky uh, lubricant that was on there. So I've taken that bend out. So let me stick it back in here. Now this is all the way, all the way over here. This is our reverse. All right, so that lines up. And here's our fifth gear, which is all the way to the other end of the platter. So that's our fastest gear, our fastest speed, I, I should say. Because as this thing gets more toward the center of this disc, you know, that's what makes it go slower. And when you get to the further to the outside, that makes it go faster. So this adjustment, where it's at, looks like it's good. So let me put that washer back on there. And let's put that Welcome back, Cotter. 
pin in there. All right. Let me bend it over so we don't don't fall out. Let me put this quick pin back in in the top here. Now it's working. Let's put never seize on these shafts. We don't want those wheels to rust to the shaft. Because this thing, I'm going to sell it. I'm not going to be able to sell it for what I got into it. I got way, way too much money into this thing. Again, I'm just doing it because we thought it'd make a good video. But whoever's buying it, at least they're getting something where the drive has all been gone through. But normally I wouldn't fix something up like this and try to resell it with the amount of work that it needed because I'd be losing money, you know, because I'm putting new tires on it and all this drive work and getting it running. Normally I would have probably just scrapped this thing. might have taken the engine off. Oh, I forgot to put these on. That's right, these washers gotta go on first. Then the wheels. Then those snap rings. And the last thing would be to put that belly plate on it, but we're going to want to test it. All right, we're in our groove. Put our quick pins in here. Because we're going to want posi traction. You know what? Let me clean these up on the, on the wire wheel, too. They're going in a little, a little tight. All right, I buffed these clean. And I'll put a little sleeves on these, too. There, they fit in a lot better. I kind of like these older snow blowers over the newer ones, only for the fact that these newer ones got too many gadgets on them. Some of the gadgets are kind of neat where, you know, they got a power, where the chute is a power turn and, the, you know, it's all power control. But to me, that's just more stuff to go wrong and it could be very expensive to repair all that gadgetry on it if you don't take care of it because you got to remember if you're out blowing snow and it's sub-zero out you know cold weather doesn't like that plastic a lot of times that plastic breaks and cracks or it gets frozen and then you got that little power chute thing and it won't turn back and forth and you're trying to get the snow to blow and you end up burning it out and then you find out that component costs a lot of money so yeah I'm not really impressed with a lot of these Newer snow blowers. Too much gadgets on there. Just make it basic and simple. So you gotta turn the handle to move it. Oh well, just takes you a little bit longer. You know, I do like the heated hand grip thing. That's kind of nice. I can't see anything going wrong with them. They've had that heated hand grip stuff around forever on snowmobiles. And I remember we used to put them on our ATVs. We used to buy the ones for the snowmobiles and put them on our ATVs, but. And there's neutral. All right, so as Elskins would say, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. There's gas in it. 
and the gas is off let's turn the gas on let's choke it the little key is in there that's the one thing about this one you got to have this key to turn it on and off I believe yeah there's no switch down here to stop it so this one you got to have this little key We needed some snow. Let me look at this gearbox in the front. Looks like it's got a pretty good sized gearbox on it. Not like some of these new ones got a little gearbox on it. And would break. So I gotta flip it back up. Let me turn the gas back off. Put that belly pan on. We're getting good traction. It's spinning. If we get some snow here, which they're saying we might, we might do a video where we'll blow snow with this one. I don't know if you remember, but last year we had that old Sears, that most dangerous snow blower with the locking handle. We'll get that one out and blow some snow with that one. And uh, we'll look around here and see if we got any other snow blowers that we can dig out. So now I can put this cover back on. That's bent. Let me let me hammer that straight. I don't know how that got bent. Got to do a little body work. Now my hammers are missing. Here. Come over here to my my little welding. There we go. That's fixed up. So yeah, here's an old snow blower. Let's see how it works. Maybe we'll even test that waxing, waxing the inside because it's supposed to be some wet. Heavy snow we're supposed to be getting. Maybe we can do a little test. We'll try to see if uh, we can get the snow to clog up. Then we'll clear it out. Put wax in there. See if that helps keep it from clogging. But it all depends on the weather, man. Two more screws that go down here. Those look like they're stripped out or missing. Let me see, they might be stripped out. All right, so we got some of these are, are uh, stripped out. So I'm gonna try to fix them by uh, backing this up with some steel. because they're self-threading screws. I could put my, use my nut cert tool and put some nut certs in there, but I'm gonna try this first. to make the hole a little smaller. Right, this 
one was stripped out. Tightened up that time. Oh yeah, they were just spinning before. There's your dinner. All fixed again. Well, stay tuned. We might, uh, might take this baby out, blow some snow with it, see how well it does. Leave the little gas out, because I had it tip forward. But the gas will shut off. It'll be fine. Well, there you have it. There we fix this old turd up. We polished another turd. See, I'm polishing it right now. Another turd polished. Well, if you haven't already subscribed to this YouTube channel, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Follow me with your wore out snow blowers on Facebook and Instagram. Check out our web store. We've got all kinds of stuff like this Podunk County Pocket Key. Pocket Key, Pocket Key, Pocket Key, Pocket Key, Pocket Key, Pocket Key. You know where this Pocket Key would look good? It'd look good on your body. Get yours today. Spark plug necklace, we got all kinds of stuff. And as usual, and as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Fix the drive on the old snowblower that I got way too much money in. Oh well, made for a good video. Okay, I totaled up what it cost to fix that snowblower and it just snowballed out of control. That's why it's important when you look at jobs like this that you look at everything. Because here we just thought that it was just going to be, you know, oh, we'll just tune it up, put a set of tires on it, and, you know, we can flip it and make some money. But no, it, it snowballed out of control. So let me run down the list. So we put a, a new friction disc, fuel line, shutoff valve, spark plug, oil, carb kit, float, axle bushings, the bushings for the drive system, tires. Two new belts. The parts alone with tax came to $319.04. Then I figured about another two and a half hours of labor to do all that. That came to $175. So our grand total came to $494.04. So almost $500 to fix that that old turd there. It's a good snow blower, but nobody's gonna buy it for no $500. I'll be lucky if I can get $200 for it. So that's $300 more. So that's a significant loss on this job. So that's why it's important, like I said, to look at everything when you're evaluating something. Now that would be different if you know, somebody owned that and they said, hey, that thing's got sentimental value. It was my dad's or my grandpa's. And I'd be like, well, it could be expensive to repair. It could be up to $500. And they say, I don't care. I want it fixed. That's a different story. But in the case of trying to sell that, there's nobody that's going to buy that for 500 bucks. So I really, I really took it in the shorts on that one. And again, your shop labor rates may vary from mine. So it could be higher, it could be lower, but figure about two and a half hours to do all that work. All right, here it is. You know what that is? I can't even tell what that is. That photo's terrible. It's all blurry. Oh, come on, man. You can't do nothing with what I got here? No, Scruffy, sorry. You're gonna have to come back with a model number or the old part or a better picture of the old part 
Something, but I can't help you. Oh man, come on. Uh, well, actually, you know what? I'll just call my wife, have her take a picture of the model and send it to me. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Whatever, Scruffy. But I got a lot of very important work to do. So, if you'll excuse me. Hey, kitten. I need you to do something for me. Can you go out to the garage and take a picture of that model number off that tractor? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, great, thanks. I love you too, kitten. Meow. All right, send it on up. Bye. That sounds way terrible. All right, here's the picture right here, the model. Woo, all right, yeah. <laughs> 96 moves, that's pretty good. All right, let me see what you got. Look that up, Daryl. That's just the picture of the decal on the hood. I need more than that. I need the model number. It's on a tag that's on the tractor. The model and serial number. I need that off of that tag on the tractor. Oh, crap. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to go home, grab the old part, take a picture of the model number, and then come back up here, all right? How's that sound? Yeah. You go home and do that. I got very important work to attend to. All right, Terrell, I'll see you in a little bit. Huh. Hey, Terrell. Hope you're not too busy. I need a part for my mower. Kind of in the middle of something here, Slippers, and it's very important. What the heck is this? Somebody drawing an amoeba? Oh, come on, it'll just take a second. I got a picture of the model number on my phone here. <laughs> hey, check it out. You'll never guess who I ran into on vacation. <laughs> huh? 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 You know who that is? Huh? Come on, take a guess. Here we go again. Yeah. It's on here somewhere. I just saw it the other day. <laughs> <laughs>